Hyperthyroidism, or overactive thyroid, is a condition that can present in many guises and can be quite challenging for physicians to diagnose. In this video, we'll take a look at hyperthyroidism. A 23-year-old woman who was recently diagnosed with hyperthyroidism went to see her doctor because of a rash that had developed on her neck. The doctor examined her, put her on anti-allergy medication, gave her some steroids and sent her home. Shortly after that, she went to the emergency room because the rash had now spread to her chest, her stomach, her back, her genital area and her upper and lower legs. The emergency room physician examined her, gave her antihistamine medications, antiology medications and steroids intravenously and admitted her to the hospital for further observation. She had recently been started on a medication for her hyperthyroidism called carbimazole. The doctors were not certain what the cause of her rash was. Hyperthyroidism is a condition in which the thyroid gland produces an excessive amount of T3 and T4, two hormones that the thyroid gland makes. This can cause a variety of symptoms including hyperactivity, irritability, heat intolerance, excessive sweating, frequent urination, polyphagia, eating a lot of food, weight loss, oligomenorrhea, and loss of libido. Doctors on examining these patients would find a goiter, they would find warm, clammy skin, they may find racing of the heart, they may find a special arrhythmia called atrial fibrillation in older patients, and in some cases they may find gynecomastia in male patients which is an enlargement of the breast tissue. The most common cause of thyroid disease is Graves' disease, which is an autoimmune disease of the thyroid gland. In Graves' disease, the body produces autoantibodies that bind to the TSH receptors in the thyroid gland, and these stimulate the gland to produce excessive amounts of T3 and T4, the two hormones that the thyroid gland makes. On other occasions, the thyroid may develop nodules like toxic multinodular goiter or maybe a single nodule such as toxic adenoma and these nodules can sometimes become autonomous and produce thyroid hormones T3 and T4 autonomously leading to high levels of the hormone in the blood and symptoms of hyperthyroidism. Less frequently inflammation may take place in the thyroid gland and the inflammation can cause destruction of the thyroid tissue and release of thyroid hormones into the bloodstream. Inflammation in the thyroid gland may be the result of viral infections such as influenza viruses or Coxsackie viruses or the inflammation may be the result of the immune system attacking the thyroid gland. Certain types of medication can cause hyperthyroidism. Of these, amiodarone is probably the most common cause among medications of hyperthyroidism, but other drugs such as lithium can also cause hyperthyroidism. Even less frequently, certain types of thyroid cancer can produce thyroid hormones. Follicular cancer of the thyroid, metastatic follicular cancer, can sometimes cause the production of T3 and T4 leading to symptoms of hyperthyroidism. Less frequent than this even is secondary hyperthyroidism in which parts of the brain produce hormones that stimulate the gland to make T3 and T4. Patients with Graves' disease have high titers of antibodies that bind to the TSH receptors in the thyroid gland that stimulate the gland to cause the disease. But they can also have other types of antibodies in their blood, such as anti-TPO antibodies, anti-thyroid peroxidase antibodies, or anti-thyroglobulin antibodies. And these antibodies can cause other symptoms in the patients. For example, patients with high titers of these antibodies can have inflammation of the heart muscle, a condition known as myocarditis, or some of them can develop transient paralysis in the legs, or in other cases they can have rashes on the skin. Particularly peculiar to hyperthyroidism in graves 
is the pretibial myxedema, which is thickening of the skin on the anterior surface of the leg. Diagnosis of hyperthyroidism is made by clinical observation supported by blood testing and clinicians would test the blood to see if there are autoantibodies to the thyroid TSH receptor as well as measure the T3 and the T4 levels in the blood and based on these they can make a diagnosis. On other occasions doctors use ultrasound or they use radioactive iodine scans to measure the activity of the thyroid and to make their diagnosis based on those. Treatment of hyperthyroidism depends on the underlying cause of the hyperthyroidism and can include drugs such as PTU, propylthiouracil, methamazole, or carbimazole, or doctors can destroy the thyroid gland using radioactive iodine or surgical techniques. The patient at the beginning of our video was found to have high titers of anti-TPO antibodies which could have triggered the rash that she was suffering. She was also on a medication called carbimazole which is a medication used to treat her hyperthyroidism and this medication also can be associated with rashes on rare occasions. The carbimazole was discontinued and she was given intravenous medication, steroids as well as anti-allergy medication, and she recovered quickly on this regimen. They discharged her and had her follow up within a week to have her T3 and T4 tested as well as to be placed at that time on alternative medications for her hyperthyroidism. I hope you found the video useful and you were able to glean some useful information from it. I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Thanks for watching.